well, I believe we've been totally stoked is going to enter my lexicon for getting beat by a team that you probably should have beaten. But since that 5-1 loss to Stoke, we've been on a very good run. We've clinched our Champions League group, we're unbeaten in the Premier League, and today is the A23 Derby against Brighton. My name's F. Angelico, and this is the Palace March, episode 68. And as you can see, well, that 5-1 loss is, is glaring. <sighs> That's going to leave a mark for a long, long time. But we got ourselves right against Shakhtar. Shakhtar was pretty hapless this Champions League. I will show you that here in just a minute. This was a moderately rotated side, but we got off to a quick start. Fogner, a 6-minute goal. Chris Manning, a 10th-minute goal. Petriak. Brought Shakhtar close with a goal in the 44th minute, but Borgia had a goal in the 85th minute to put the game out of reach, and then Miguel Luis, an extra time goal. Salt in the wound, that's all that was. We had 23 shots, 12 on target. Shakhtar had 4-1. and one. We had three clear-cut chances and a half chance, and a decent possession advantage. Shakhtar tried, and frankly, when that's the best thing you can say, that that's, doesn't really sound like much. They got a couple quality players. I just... They were, they were outclassed. This was the group of death for Shakhtar, no doubt about it. After that, we were home against Chelsea, and we beat them 2-0. This was a very good game for us. Chelsea was on the attack most of the game, and we we counterpunched. I went to the I went to the counter to the to the defend, how whatever you want to call it, the cautious. And as you can see, my back four was absolutely solid. 7.1 from Korea, 7.8 from Mepham, although a little bit of that is the goal. His defensive work was outstanding. Basanka on a 7-3, Sintelis on a 7-4. Ricci, a player of the match game, with his goal. Uh, we had 8 shots, 5 on target. Chelsea had 20 and 6. They had no clear-cut chances. They had the one-half chance. They had 9 shots from distance. And that hurt them more than anything else. Chris Mepham, a 21st-minute goal off a set-piece header. Giacomo Ricci, a 66-minute goal to put the game out of reach. This was one of those games where our defense needed to make a stand, and they did. And I couldn't be happier. We were then away at Bournemouth, and this was a pretty back-and-forth game. Bournemouth had their chances. Uh, they got on the board first, and Andrea Connie 16th-minute goal. Gullis had a 30th-minute penalty kick, and then a goal four minutes later it was very, very nice. Eddie Nketiah put the game out of reach with a goal in the 53rd minute. Bournemouth got some really good play from Conti. And Lookman also had a solid game as well. And even though it doesn't show it, Corda and um, Haley, I mean, they took Haley off of the half. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe because he was at 73%, but that just doesn't seem right. Um, we were just better across the board today. This was a pretty rotated side, as you can see. And this is what I would consider to be mostly the B squad, with the exception of uh, Gubbles. Usually what happens is... There'll be a midfielder and a striker who are part of the regular rotation that will stay on the field. And lately, I've been rotating that between all three of my primary strikers and all three of my primary midfielders. This was an absolutely solid performance. Gubbles, a player of the match with the two goals, although Nketia, by all rights, probably should have gotten it. He had the one chance created, the three key uh, passes, the one assist. Jeff had a solid game. Chilwell, a really solid game as well. You know, when Sablik is... My worst player on a 6-9, and Manning had a 6-6. But Manning is, well, frankly, is a boy amongst men. He is a very good championship player, but a not-so-great premier player. Um, I'm glad to be getting him some playing time. He's had some contributions. He's had some very nice goals. He's just, he's not a long-term solution, either as a starter. I mean, at best, on our team, he's a fifth starter you know, second off the bench. And that's what he's been getting now. I've really needed him this year, and I'm glad he's been here. But I think if we were to go forward after this season, which we're not, um, because this is the last season of the Palace March, you know, the goal is to win the Champions League. And if we don't, well, it's kind of a lost season. But be that as it may, you know, Manning, Manning's a quality player. He'd be one of those players who would probably find a long, fruitful career on a championship team. After Bournemouth, we were away at Tottenham, and this was a game that, by all rights, we probably should have drawn. Jacopo got us off to a fast start, a goal in the second minute. Jose Gaia equalized in the 27th minute. Jacopo put us a point ahead in the 34th minute. 
Weston McKinney had a very nice goal in the 52nd minute, and then uh, Alessandro Cordy with an 87th minute goal that was very, very nice to get us the winner. Tottenham, we were lucky to get away from this game with the win. Tottenham was on the attack most of the game. 21 shots, 10 on target, two clear-cut chances, two half chances, only six long shots. That really kind of helped them. They worked the ball in the box very, very well. Guy and McKinney both had solid games. A lot of that was defensive. You know, we held Harry Kane to a 6-3. We held Ryan Sessegnon and Deli Ali to, you know, standard standard ratings, I guess you'd say. 6.9 is average. Sessegnon was a little bit below average. Ricci and Cordy were absolutely outstanding for us. Cordy came on uh, with 15 minutes left, you know, as kind of the quote-unquote super sub. Um, it was his turn in the rotation to rest, but I kept him on the bench just in case. And uh, Tonali's kind of at that stage where he's getting tired a lot more because he's playing a lot more. So having someone like Cordy and Jeff on the bench really, really helps. Neca, 7-1. Correa, 7-7. He was absolutely solid on defense. His performances the past couple times he's played have convinced me that moving on Sablik is probably the right thing to do. Sablik, for whatever reason, used to be like a 4.5-star, 5-star potential guy, if I remember correctly. Actually, he's here on the bench because I actually remember to put him on the bench this time. Let me go to him now here. As you can see now, he's two and a half star current ability, three star potential ability. At best, that makes him a backup. And for some reason, his physicals are falling. You know, he's only 22 years old. So, you know, I can move him on. He's he's worth a little bit of money, and I'm reasonably sure there are going to be takers out there for him. But he's he's not a long term solution, especially with with Correa on the bench now. But after escaping Tottenham with a 3-2 win, we were at home against Milan. This was the ch last Champions League group stage game we played, and we beat them. Ricci a 14th minute goal. Borja Mayol brace of goals in the 33rd and the 58th minutes. Vincent Corte, Vincinius. I don't know why I read that as Vincent. Vincinius Corte, a brace of goals, 12th and 78th minutes. Bellanova going out really kind of hurt their defense. We, we made the most of that. Once once he went out, it was exploit that defensive right side as much as you can. And that's where both of Mayoral's goals came from. Corte had a really solid game. Other than that, Milan was just average. And we were better than average, which is why we won. But as a result, we clinched the group on goal differential. Ahead of Monaco, Milan loses out and goes to Europa League. Shakhtar lost every single game they played. They had one goal and a negative 20 goal differential. So, yeah, this was definitely the group of death for them. Uh, you know what? I haven't checked the overall. I'm not quite sure um, who's advanced and who hasn't. Let's, uh, let's see if we can. So, Bayern and Real Madrid advanced. Barcelona and Borussia Mönchengladbach advanced. Sporting got knocked out entirely. PSG and Man United advanced. Yeah, kind of expected that. Man City and Marseille advance. Liverpool and Fiorentina. Benfica is probably going to be upset. Juventus and Leipzig advance. Ajax goes to the Europa League. Atletico and Porto advance. And we advance. Did I skip somebody? Liverpool, Man City, Marseille. No. Anything outstanding? 18 points seems to be the highest. Yeah, I get the feeling that we're going to be uh, seeing Monaco again in the future here sometime soon. So the original plan was to come back for Milan, but uh, it was after the Shakhtar game, actually, that we got word that we had clinched the league, that worst we could qualify for second place. So I played the Shakhtar game because I had failed to notice today is the home part of the A23 Derby against Brighton, which, you know, it's always a fun time. I've, I've, I've really gotten a lot more into it, having, having discovered the history behind it and the... Uh, friendly rivalry on and off the field and not so friendly rivalry on and off the field in some cases but this should be a good game brighton's fighting relegation but they always give us a tough time so i am going to check my best 11 and the bench and we will be back with the match against brighton in the a23 derby at selhurst in just a bit Well, today we are playing our 4-3-3. Rams in a goal. Chilwell, Rawl, Mepham, and Correa as the defensive back four. Cordy, Tonali, and Fogner is the midfield three. Ricci, Gullis, and Mayoral up top as the strikers. And what is that formation? A 3-1-3-1-2. That is interesting. I see us playing a lot wider than normal to try and take advantage of that. A couple good players, though. 
Ramson's getting the start. I'm giving NECA a break. Um, in other news, I promised Benasser more playing time. And uh, he got a lot of first-team playing time. But he didn't get as much as he wanted, so he's pitching a fit. So he's out of here in January. I just I don't have time for him. Plus, he's kind of lost in the shuffle. I really don't need him anymore. And there were a couple of teams sniffing around him in the offseason last year, but I wanted to keep him, at least for midfield depth, especially with the fixture congestion and everything coming up. So... You know, I just I gave him a ton of starts, and he was just like, I don't know. I I mean, let me get through this here. Anyhow, as I was saying, Ben Astor's out of here. Normally, if players come to me and they say I'd really like to go to this other team, I'll let them go to that other team, unless they're someone like Mayoral or Neca or Basanku. Well, maybe Basanku would leave, and even Neca would leave for the for the money. Prices, right? Mayoral back to Fogner off the throw, and he lost it in. Ricci is there, and he, I want to say, heads it in. Far post. 13th goal this season for Iagabo. He's really coming to his own. Fogner to Mayoral, back to Fogner. Nice cross, and skies over the defender. Past Rea, which, I don't know, Rea didn't look like he didn't do much. We're not the healthiest team at least condition-wise, but I think we'll be fine. Maitland-Niles, corner kick in, knocked away, but it goes out to Jahan Bakish. Back to Maitland-Niles, back to Jahan, because I'm not saying that as fast as I can, and dunk with a screamer from about 24 yards past Ramsden. That was well struck. He found a gap and just absolutely exploited it. We're going to go to the attack here. Dunk with the throw into Barrow, who loses control of it. Not quite sure. He headed it, but he headed it the wrong direction. Mepham over to Crea. Up to Fogner. Up to Gubbles. Passes it up to Ricci. And he, oh, he tried lofting Rea, but he kicked it too hard and it went over the net instead. We switch to the attack the last few minutes of the first half. See if that helps us out a little bit. Fogner just picked up a knock. Okay, it's close to halftime. He can come off. And that is the half. Nine shots, four on target for us. Seven shots, three on target for Brighton. I totally forgot to look at the size of the box. That's actually fairly close. Not too bad, Jellico. Okay, let's... Um... Take Fogner off and bring on Luis. Chillel. Oh, off the crossbar. It was well struck, but a bit too high. Change the tactic around a little bit. We're playing with a little bit more width than normal to try and take advantage of the fact that they're very narrow. Rams in a lovely block. That was that was well done. That was NECA-esque. Rhea, up into the crowd towards Barrow. Chilwell has it. To Raul, up to Luis, who has it forward. Gubbles runs it down. Drives right, passes into space to Mayoral. Cross it, Borgia to Ricci. Oh, Rhea with a nice save. You know what? Okay. I'm not quite sure why, but for some reason... Mepham is apprehensive, so we are going to bring on Faraz. Save the last sub for a few minutes here. Tonali with the corner kick as I'm making sure. Oh, wow, what a strike by Sandro. Holy cow. Wow, that was that was goal year worthy right there. Uh, you know what? We're gonna come off the attack and go back to balanced. Luis on the throw into Mayoral. Crosses it in, knocked down by Gubbles to Tonali to Cordy, and his shot is just wide right. Wow, that was a goal. Luis on the throw in. Knocked away. Maitland Niles sends it up, but no one's there. Correa's gonna run it down to Faraz. Back to Correa. To Tonali. Back to Correa. 
back to Tanoi. Sandro sends it forward to Ricci, who is left all alone, and he hits it right at Rhea, who, with a very nice block, pushes it wide left. Luis, on the corner kick. Back out to Tanoi. Back to Luis. Back to Tanoi, who loses it. Was that a foul? Yeah, it must have been a foul. Somebody pushed somebody. Jahan. Well, that was interesting. Goebbels to Luis. Off the header. He passes it up, but Dunk knocks it away. Over to Rich. To Maitland Niles. Back to Rich. Long pass towards nobody in particular on Brighton's side. Chilwell's there. Sends up Connie. Sends it across the field. Correa driving forward. Crosses it in. Rishi's there. To Cordy. Off the post. Mayoral. And it bounces off Rhea, who charged out at him. That was a nice... David Reyes had some very nice saves this game. Goebbels on the corner kick. Knocked away by Rhea. Luis at the top of the box. Caps over to Tenali. To Raul. He's got two players on him. He's got to be fouled. Yep. Chilwell to free kick. Left side of the goal is pretty wide open. And Ray with the block. Connie's there, though, and he puts it past him. Oh, and it was disallowed? Was he offsides? He must have been offsides. Unless they counted it. Was there no replay? There was no replay. I did not see a 3D replay of that goal. Well, there's something dodgy going on, because when I try and click the replay here, it takes me to the part where Rhea blocked Borgia's shot. So I got no idea what the heck is going on there. However, a solid, solid game for us. 18 shots, 9 on target, the one award work hit, 3 clear-cut chances, 3 half chances, 8 long shots is a little troubling. Not as troubling as their 6, though, when they had 11 shots, 4 on target, no clear-cut chances or half chances for Brighton. They had a possession advantage. It really didn't work out for them. Okay, so here's that goal. Ray with a nice save, but Conti follows it up. Always nice to win in front of the home crowd. Except now we're playing Chelsea in three days in the Carabao. But it's the Carabao. So, okay, let's uh, see what's going on here. Wagner. Oh, one to three days. That's fine. Sandro? Five to six days. Well, he was going to rest the next game anyways. Uh... Lonstrup. I do not know this guy. Christian Christian Lonstrup that does not like me. I don't know why. He he actually tipped us for relegation this year after we won the league last year. League wise League wise, we are tied with Man United for first place. We are ahead by one on the goal differential. Thank you, Stoke. But it's turning into a two-team race. Man City is 10 points behind in third place at this point in the season. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Man City, Liverpool, Everton's falling off a little bit. Uh, Huddersfield is not having the best season. Neither is Burnley. Wolves, the F. Angelico kiss of death as I selected them to get European football this year. And, of course, they're in a relegation fight. Schedule-wise... Let me scroll down here. Hmm. Do we come back at the end of the transfer window? That's seven games. That's a lot. Um, we can come back middle. Of, we can come back middle of the transfer window for Everton. That's one, two, three, four, five games away. And then, yeah, that actually works out because. We'll be back for our Champions League first knockout round, which eh, probably won't be a double live comm this time around. But as we get closer to the season, probably more double live comms. Well, we're back to our winning ways. After getting totally stoked, it's, it's nice. The defense, it's slacking a little bit, but a lot of that is due to the fact everybody's being rotated. There's, there's cohesion amongst the guys, but it's more like 75-80% as opposed to 95-100%. You know, you play next to the same guy every day. You get used to what they do and where they move. You know, that's not happening now. 
which, which is fine, you know, as long as we're still winning and we're scoring more goals. And that's never been a problem for this team, is scoring more goals. It's stopping the goals that's always been our issue. And frankly, it's, I don't know, it's, we've moved beyond having issues with stopping people from scoring goals. We, we've just, we bought the subscription. You know, I think the this this stretch right here where we had the five uh, games where we didn't concede, that's been our best effort so far in the seven seasons I've been doing this, I believe. I'd have to go back and check, but frankly it's late. I'm a bit tired and you know, I'm gonna go set I'm, I'm gonna go upstairs and celebrate the fact that I just beat Brighton at Selhurst in the A twenty three Derby. Good job, guys. If you liked what you've seen and heard, please give a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Questions, criticisms, comments, leave those down below. I'll answer them as fast as I can. My name's F. Angelico. Thank you for watching.